You know, I get questions constantly about study, about you know, starting off careers, about you know, where, where should I go for my education? How do I get started in business and so on? I'm going to be talking to a friend of mine, Cedric, and I'm going to show you the kind of things you should be aiming for <laughs> coming right up. Okay, in this video, we're going to be talking to a friend of mine, Cedric, who uh, you're originally from Kenya, is that right, Cedric? But you're living in South Africa now. Yes, I am. And the reason I thought it would be interesting to talk to Cedric is he has a very interesting background and I think a really interesting future. And I get so many questions around education and careers and starting businesses. I think you might get a few really good tips out of what Cedric's got to tell us. So... Um, tell us a little bit about your education, Cedric. How did, how did that come about? Because you've got a fairly unique education environment at the moment. Yes, yes. Um, I, currently, I, I do go to the African Leadership Academy here in Johannesburg, South Africa. But I've, I, I think I've had quite an interesting high school career to begin with. Because from day one, when I joined high school, I told myself I, I, I wanted to do something different. So I planned it out um, in my second year of high school. I would go for an exchange in the States, come back, um, stay about a year or so, and then I would immediately go to the African Leadership Academy, partly because I felt these experiences were really going to allow me to understand how the world is structured and how things are looking like on the other side of the pond and, and uh, in context different from my own. So I do think it's it's been a fairly interesting experience, but it has been entirely worth it. Well, so we met, uh, oh, what, probably a year ago now, when we were in the African Leadership Academy. And I have to say, some really smart people there. I met some of your friends there. Um, there's something that really sort of got my attention, and that is uh, at the African Leadership Academy, you got into consulting. Tell us about that. You're kind of running your own consulting business. Yeah, yeah, that was quite interesting because when I got to the African Leadership Academy, I, I was really certain that I was going to go towards public health or medicine or something in those lines. And then I started interning for this consulting firm, which was just weird because it was just a bunch of 19, 20 year olds that are working with small businesses across the continent. And that was just fascinating, partly because I my parents' background, um, all of them are educated, both of them are educators, teachers. And at some point in my early childhood, they run small businesses, that probably terribly failed. Yeah. So I, I get this 19, 20 year olds talking about helping to radically transform the entrepreneurial ecosystem of the African continent by supporting small businesses grow and scale. And I was just quite fascinated. So when I start interning with them and working with all the small business owners from across the continent, I realize that a lot of these young people are solving problems that I never knew existed. And it was just mind blowing. So getting into that path where I was certain that I needed to play a role in also understanding how it's going to radically transform the entrepreneurial ecosystem of the continent and seeing how I was going to support all the small businesses that we were working with, create a type of social and financial value that was going to sustain the continent's long-term economic growth. And in, in a sense that the small and micro-sized enterprises contribute to about 60 to 70% of all the employment on the continent. So if there's any way that we could really, really transform the continent inclusively, then we'd have to start with them. So it's been a really interesting journey. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I do currently run the firm as, as a chief operating officer. We've, we've done quite some interesting work. And by then, it's all been very, very interesting learning experiences. No, fascinating. And I, I've enjoyed our conversations, you know, over the last year or so, talking about some of the things you're doing and some of the projects that you've been involved in. I mean, it's amazing. I'm, I'm learning as much from you as you are from me. <laughs> so it's, you're solving things that I didn't even know were a problem. Um, and, and then you kind of got into entrepreneurship as well, because, I mean, it was a few months ago, you were telling me you, you had uh, 
this idea of um, getting into sort of broader education for entrepreneurs in Africa. You were starting to look for funding. Tell us a little bit about that. It, that started quite interestingly, and it was partly informed by, by the consulting background I had. Um, there was a time in around April or something when we were approached by this young entrepreneur um, from East Africa, had a really um, gaping food supply chain um, issue. And I, I really had no idea what supply chain is all about at that particular point in time. So I realized that I have to have conversations with people, understand how this whole industry works like. And I have to uh, really start from scratch, ideally. And I think that's where I met you from. Mm. And so all these webinars, all these uh, meetings attending and, and uh, a lot of reading to understand how this industry works like that, I had no idea it was really that critical. And then I realized that there's, there's a far much larger problem with the, the continent's research and development space in the sense that um, we really didn't need to do a lot in terms of building our own research capacity. Mm. So in terms of developing the type of homegrown solutions for the continent that are very context specific and deliberately aligned towards allowing us mitigate a lot of the challenges that are specific to the mm -hmm. continent. That was the angle I was looking at this from. Yeah. And the direct path I saw was education. So how do we sustainably increase the quality and amount of research and development conducted on the continent? From then, um, started this whole idea around uh, building an ecosystem of the type of researchers and innovators and entrepreneurs that I truly believe are going to be essential in driving the kind of destructive innovation the continent needed. So we were going to start off with a building a fully fledged STEM research high school and seeing how we're going to develop the next generation of, of this young researchers and entrepreneurs that are going to drive this kind of sustainable change. So the whole thing, um, Umbrellaed under this organization we call Logikai Science, a weird, funny name, but it was very deliberate. And uh, it's been quite an interesting journey because I've, I've never run a nonprofit organization before. I have had to do a lot of learning in the process, yeah. but it's all the way been very, very uh, transformative on my person too. Absolutely. And uh, we, we didn't touch on the funding there because I, I can remember a few months ago you were telling me about Logic Eye and your whole idea about that. And you, oh, we, we've kind of got a bit of funding. And it was like, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and this was quite interesting because I, I didn't really think there'll be that much interest mm. around it that early on because we started officially around February. Mm. And by, by August, we, we'd gotten about $1.2 million worth of support. And yep. the last, by the last count, you're standing at $1.57 or something million. Dollars. Yep. And uh, so it's, it's uh, and the interest this past few weeks has just been mind blowing because we, we do run a volunteer program where we engage with young Africans from we, uh, that are going to tertiary institutions mm. across the continent and the world. Mm. In this past two weeks, we've had about 24 so requests to join our volunteer programs. And yep. cumulatively, there's been about 214 requests That's to amazing. work with us in this capacity. And That's it's amazing. just, it's, it's completely mind blowing. Tell me, what, what, have you, what have you learned over the last two years about business you know about starting a business or about yourself what have been the the big high points of learning for you over the last couple of years i i must say it's it's been um quite the steep learning curve mm. i i've like i mentioned before we, especially on this on on the, the educational nonprofit i run mm. i've never really done anything of this mm. nature before and understanding how all the different moving parts of all this uh, mm. of the organization need to run and how we need to properly harness the talent that we bring into us mm. the right direction and building towards our vision and our mm. and, and, and uh, what we were hoping to achieve it's been really transformative in the sense that i have had to quickly and and um, yeah. very very uh, understand how to help organizations and people 
create mm. the type of social and financial value that is yeah. leaned back for the long run. And it, it's been a culmination of different learning experiences. Mm. Most of them has just been from conversations like the one I'm having with you, yeah. uh, on the shoulders of more experienced people, like the likes of you from Logistics Bureau, um, Professor Linga from CCG, mm. uh, Bernard, Hassan mm. Procurement. In Kenya, it's yeah. Been, it's been, um, it's also been revealing in the sense that I've had to understand what my values are mm. and what type of um, business person that an mm. entrepreneur that I actually wanted to be. And yeah. I, I do think that there's still quite a lot I, I need to learn. Yeah. But the past few yeah. months have just been, uh, like I said, a very steep yeah. learning curve for me. Do you know, um, you know, for, for people watching, why the hell am I talking to Cedric? Um, I mean, Cedric, I've, I've been inspired by our conversations over the last year or so. And, you know, I, I think some of the key lessons that, that people watching this can take out of it are don't put barriers in the way, you know, artificial barriers in your head about what you want to achieve, you know, what it's possible to achieve, uh, you know, in terms of career or education, because, you know, in our early discussions, the, the things that, that inspired me, and, and let, me, let, let me just tell people about our first discussion. It was a little bit like this. And I said, oh, that's amazing. You know, tell me about your consulting company. And then I said, so what did you study at university? And you said, oh, I'm not at university. I'm still at high school. Said, what? You know, a 19-year-old at high school running a, a school project, which was this con consulting company. Uh, you know, I think that's phenomenal. And, I, you know, I, I take my hat off to you. And I think people should look to you for inspiration uh, in terms of, you know, get off your butt and do stuff, you know. Uh, and, and you've started another business. You got one and a half million dollars of funding for that. You're, you're heading out to the states later this year to study uh, at university. Um, wow, you know, I, I can't wait to watch what you're doing over the next few years. I, well, actually, I, I, I do think um, it's it's quite interesting that you mentioned that because I I've had the pleasure of working with a lot of entrepreneurs on the continent that are doing amazing work. And this past uh, month or so, when I had to do a lot of field research for some mm. uh, a foundation that we're working with at the consulting firm mm. and walking around towns in Uganda mm. and uh, yeah. a few places yeah. in Tanzania and Kenya and going mm. to that grassroots level, I realized that what I mentioned to you earlier around mm. the type of problems that entrepreneurs on the continent yeah. are solving, just mind blowing. Mm. And it makes you think about the necessity of entrepreneurship on specifically on the continent, because yeah. uh, most of these young people didn't have access to the type of financing that we yeah. see startups in Silicon Valley get access to. But the type of scale, the type of growth, the type of impact that you can actually see on that grassroots level is just mind blowing. And they're solving problems that are not, not, not superficial problems, but a lot of root problems and a lot of um, the drivers of, mm. of, of, the, of the problems that are solving are actually real challenges yeah. that affect human lives. And yeah. it's, it's, it's just quite interesting in the sense that it makes you think about how entrepreneurship on the continent and the starting off mm. it and the momentum that is required to start off these things is quite important because mm. we need to build our own infrastructures to support the type of growth and the scale that we need to experience. Yeah. We, we, we need to be able to sustainably grow. Mm. We need to be able to really build a type of frameworks and systems that can allow us play on that global scale. Mm. But then for us, it, it kind of needs to start with, with entrepreneurship, with, mm. with small, small businesses, because the, the, the transition to tertiary um, institutions in the continent is probably less than 20%. Yeah. So what happens to the other 80% that can't actually access yeah. universities and colleges and technical vocational education institutions? The, the, the path they go down to is entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. And realizing that and realizing that there's such a huge population that is going down this route and entrepreneurship is quickly becoming a viable career option for a lot of young people on the continent. Yeah. It just makes you wonder and think about how sustainably we can support these entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. 
and that's that's where um the work that we are doing at the consulting firm is actually very important in that space mm. and the work that i'm also doing at the education nonprofit with, with regards to finding that convergence point between research and development and entrepreneurship is actually becoming an increasing necessity so mm. I, I do think you're, you're on point with what you just said mm. No, I, I, I think uh, truly, truly you are an inspiration. And I think, uh, you know, for people watching this, I think one of the key points you make is it's small businesses that drive the world economy, really. You know, most businesses in the world are small businesses, entrepreneurs trying to do their thing, you know, very often at a very small level. And I, and I think if you can combine your business passion with helping other small business owners and entrepreneurs develop their businesses, you know, what a fantastic way to go. And I know... You know that's very much part of your core value is to uh, is to help other businesses and see small business, particularly on the continent of Africa, grow. So, absolutely sensational. So, anybody watching, if you're thinking of starting a business, get off your butt, <laughs> follow Cedric, and do it. If you can get a small business that helps other small businesses, uh, you know that's even better. And you know, you don't have to wait until you got a university degree. This guy's still at high school. You know, he's going to university later this year. So uh, never too early to, to start, I don't, I don't think. So uh, fantastic talking to you again, Cedric. We'll, we'll definitely keep in touch over the coming months and years. And uh, we might put a couple of links down below. People can go and have a look at your consulting company and, and connect with you on LinkedIn and they can follow your progress as well. So great to Absolutely. talk to you. Great talking to you, Rob.